Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And after that last video, I had a couple of messages sent to me asking what was that semi-hollow strat that was in the background uh, near my guitar rack. Um, that's obviously uh, not a type of a strat that you would see from a Fender. And that's because I actually built this one uh, myself. So uh, the neck is a Fender US uh, solid rosewood. It's one piece of solid rosewood. And this was actually the first piece of the guitar that I bought. This is kind of what inspired me to build the guitar. Uh, I had not seen one of these before. Uh, Fender actually does sell these in the mod shop now, but at the time that I bought this, uh, they did not sell it on any guitar that they made. They only sold it as a aftermarket, uh, kind of a one-off special edition neck that you could buy uh, as a replacement neck for strats. So I decided to buy one. They're ridiculously expensive. I mean, I think the neck alone at the time, I don't know what they are now, but at the time they were about $700 just for the neck. Uh, I was able to find one uh, for a little bit less than that, uh, which is why I bought it, because uh, it was the only place I ever saw where they uh, were less than $700. Uh, but you can see uh, it's engraved. Instead of having kind of the foil uh, Fender logo, uh, it's engraved, saying Fender Stratocaster on the neck there. And so that was kind of the basis to start. I just love the feel of this thing. It's uh, one solid piece of rosewood. Uh, it has a carve out in the back where they put in walnut. Uh, that's obviously where the truss rod goes. But other than that, a uh, little carve out right there, there is no seams anywhere. This is one solid piece of rosewood. So it's really nice. It's just oiled. Uh, so it's, it's almost like a satin finish. It's really a nice feel. Uh, I don't like gloss necks and this feels more like a satin neck. Uh, beautifully rolled edges. Uh, there's no fretboard really because the whole thing is one solid piece of rosewood. Um, if you get down on the edges here, it's almost like the maple necks that they make where uh, there's no seam or anything. Uh, but this is obviously all rosewood here. So just a fantastic neck. So that kind of started this project for me. So I bought some uh, of the uh, Fender Deluxe Locking Tuners uh, that they use in the custom shop and in some of the mod shop uh, upgraded uh, designs. And that kind of started. So then when I was looking at um, the body, I wanted to get something different that I hadn't had before. I got solid body strats and, you know, the typical um, alder or mahogany is what you can usually get on uh, mod shop, custom shop, and just the standard strats. So Fender didn't make anything that was really unique, I felt. I didn't want to just buy a, a standard uh, Fender American or Fender Mexican made body. I wanted something unique. And so I got the idea from the back of the neck, since it had that uh, walnut uh, skunk stripe on it, I thought I'd like to get a walnut body. That's something unique. You don't see strats with walnut. So I found Warmoth actually was one of the only companies I could find that makes a solid a rosewood body. This one, it's it's a chambered, so it's not like one solid piece. It's actually two pieces. You can see the seam in the middle there. But it's all walnut. The front, the back, all of it is walnut. And it's chambered inside, so it's a semi-hollow uh, strat that makes it a little bit lighter. Uh, but it's also got really nice tone. I'd never had a, a walnut guitar before, and it's got a really nice uh, warm tone to it. And then uh, put on the deluxe uh, tremolo that comes with the Strat Ultras and some of the custom shop ones. Um, and then the tortoiseshell pick guard. And then I went a little um, unique for the pickups as well. I had I was going to get some standard uh, Fender uh, pickups, but I did so many other things that were unique, I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. I really need to do something more unique for the pickups. And Seymour Duncan P-Rails, I have a set of these on an old Les Paul, 
and I really like them because they are essentially P90s where they also put, if you can see closely here, uh, there's a, a hot rail, a Seymour Duncan hot rail. So it's a single coil hot rail and a true P90, and they put them together in one pickup. And then with these little toggle switches next to each one, if you have the toggle switches back, it's the P90. If you have them both forward, it's just the hot rail. If you split them both to the inside, it works as a series humbucker. And if you put the switches both to the outside, it works as a parallel humbucker. So you essentially get four pickups in one. And because Strats have three pickup slots, this being an HSH, I've got a P-rail in both the bridge and the neck, and then a, a Seymour Duncan uh, pickup in the middle as well. Then, if, if that wasn't enough, instead of just doing a standard five-way switch, I thought, you know, I'd also really like to be able to do just the two outside pickups at the same time, or have all three at the same time, and a standard five-way switch does not allow you to do that. So I had 920D wire me up this particular setup here with a push-pull on the tone here. And so when the push-pull is down, when it's normal, it just works as a normal five-way switch, normal strat. So one, one of the five normal five positions. But when you pull this out, when it is back, it activates all three pickups simultaneously. And when it's in the fourth position, it activates just the two outside pickups. So if you're keeping score at home between the four different pickups in one, the five-way switch, and the push-pull option to activate all three or just the outside two, that is a grand total of 49 pickup combinations in one guitar. Absolutely mind-blowing. So... Yeah, I just kind of decided to kind of go bonkers on this one and just figure, you know, if I'm going to build my own guitar, it's not like a guitar I'm ever going to be able to sell. I honestly spent more money on this thing than I would ever be able to sell it for anyway, so it's not like it's an investment at all. I just thought I want to get something that's a one-off that you can't find anywhere else that has way more options than any other guitar. It's basically like an all-in-one guitar. I can do... Uh, less Paul tones by uh, having the humbuckers. I can go into single coil mode. I can go into P90 mode. Literally, as I said, 49 different possible pickup combinations uh, with this one guitar, as well as semi-hollow, solid rosewood neck, um, deluxe locking tuners, upgraded tremolo, the whole nine yards. It's pretty crazy. And in fact, I actually even bought... I, I never had a chance to put it on here yet, but um, I, I think I probably will put it on at some point. I bought a kill switch <laughs> to, uh, to put on here as well and wire it up uh, just to take it one step further. So, you know, figure with the kill switch and the, and the tremolo and everything, I can get, you know, up to like 50 different types of, of uh, sound or tone combinations that I can get out of this thing. Anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, this was just kind of my project. First guitar I've ever built myself. Um, obviously, you know, I bought all the pieces from different places. Uh, I had a guy make up uh, a plate for me for the back with the serial number from the uh, neck and the body. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's all American pieces. It's all U.S. Uh, parts from Fender. In fact, everything is from Fender except the body and the pickups. Uh, the body is obviously from Warmoth, and the pickups from Seymour Duncan. Uh, but everything else on here came from Fender. Um, so it's as close to a Fender uh, mod shop or a custom shop type of a guitar that, that you could get by putting all the pieces together yourself. And actually, even the, the guitar body, I got it from Warmoth, but I didn't have them finish it. Uh, I just had them send me the raw wood, and I actually finished it myself. Uh, using true oil, uh, just because I thought that it would be a fun project. I think it would have turned out nicer if I had had uh, Warmoth do it for me, obviously. But because this was, you know, a project where I wanted to learn how how to make a guitar or put 
put a guitar together, I should say, because it's not like I'm, you know, carving out the wood or anything. But I, I wanted to put the guitar together myself, so I thought, well, I want to stain it and lacquer it myself also and just kind of figure out how that goes. And, man, that was a job. I think I spent four or five weeks just sanding and re lacquering and sanding and re-oiling and sanding and re-oiling and just try, trying to get it built up in thin coats to get it to the point where I wanted it. Um, so it's it's extremely labor intensive. When you when you pay Warmoth, you know, four or five hundred dollars for one of these bodies, I have a new appreciation for why it costs four or five hundred dollars to do that because it is uh, th- there was a lot of hours involved in that. Uh, if I had to do it again, I think I would just pay them to to finish it for me. But I'm extremely happy with the way it turned out. Um, and also because it's true oil, what I like about it is if I get any kind of a scuff or ding on it, all I got to do is sand it and re-oil it and it looks brand new again. So it's, it's I'm not worried. Like if this was a custom shop guitar that I spent four or $5,000 on, I'd be afraid to, to ding it up. But this one, I play the heck out of this thing. Uh, I don't worry if I ding it or scratch it since it's, you know, it's not like a collector's item or anything. It's something I built myself and it's, it's easy to, to buff out uh, on my own. So it's one of my favorite guitars to play, not just because I put it together, but because it's, um, it's a super high end guitar. Um, you know, it's, it's, I've got probably well over a thousand dollars worth of stuff into it, actually probably closer to thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars worth of parts into it uh and i probably couldn't sell it for any more than about a thousand but it's so much fun to play it has so many different tone options it's the neck feels incredibly good and it's not like all my other guitars that i'm afraid to scratch this one i can just go crazy with and and uh, it's just fun this is probably the most fun guitar i have to play so that's it. Uh, first and only guitar I've ever built. I'm thinking about doing a Telecaster a version of this um, with a, like Swamp Ash or something like that. We'll, we'll see. I haven't decided yet. But if you guys have any uh, questions or ideas for my next project guitar, let me know. Um, if you are interested in building your own and you have any questions about um, where I got any of the parts or how much things cost or things like that, just leave me a comment and I will do my best to answer them for you. Uh, but it was it was a really enjoyable project. I, I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot, and uh, I would definitely do it again. So that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye, guys.